Most of us write code during the day, and that's simply a function of most of our day jobs being nine to five. But what if I told you that each individual has a natural window of time during which we are biologically wired to be more effective and efficient at coding? Well, it turns out that there's strong scientific evidence suggesting that our circadian rhythms have a huge influence on what time of day we are best at certain activities like coding. And the more I dug through the many researches out there, the more it made sense to me as to why I'm so focused while coding on some days, but very distracted on some other days. So in this video, I'll share the science-based strategies I have learned for optimizing my engineering output by doing certain things at certain times of the day based on my own chronotype. By the end of this video, you should have the tools necessary to identify your own chronotype and the optimal time for you to write code for maximum focus and efficiency. All right, let's get started. Started. Hi folks, my name is Utsav. I'm a software engineer based in Seattle. I have over 20 years of experience in the industry and I'm currently a senior software engineer at Microsoft. If you're new to this channel, my goal here is to help you get the best out of your career by mentoring you around five key pillars of career development, technical skills, engineering efficiency, mindset, entrepreneurship, and financial freedom. So if that sounds interesting, please consider subscribing and follow me at Utsavise for behind the scenes and monthly Q&As. Okay, so before figuring out the most optimal time for you to code, you need to identify what your chronotype is. Chronotype is basically a person's natural inclination for the times of day when they prefer to sleep or when they're most alert or energetic. And research has shown that our chronotype is in fact genetic and the length polymorphism in the circadian clock gene directly impacts our morningness or eveningness. While circadian rhythms and energy distribution are complex areas of scientific study, we can roughly classify people into four chronotypes. People that naturally wake up around 5 a.m., 6 a.m., 7 a.m., and 9 a.m. Remember that the term naturally is key here, which means that you wake up at these times on your own and not through an alarm. Each of these groups of people have a natural window of time when they have high amount of focused energy, which is the most ideal time for you to code. To help you understand why, let me quickly talk about the differences between focused thinking and diffuse thinking and why this is important for software engineers. Focused thinking is a purposeful and concentrated thought process. When you engage in focused thinking, you intentionally dedicate time and attention to practicing, contemplating, or progressing through something. This process utilizes the prefrontal cortex of your brain, which is located right behind your forehead. This region is responsible for things like attention, memory, and decision making, as well as problem solving. Focus thinking lends itself very well to activities such as practicing a new guitar lick, solving a math problem, and you guessed it, writing code. And your optimal window of time during the day for focus thinking varies by your chronotype. If you wake up at 5 a.m., your focus thinking interval is from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. If you wake up at 6 a.m., your focus thinking interval is from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. If you wake up at 7 a.m., your focus thinking interval is from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And if you wake up at 9 a.m., your thinking thinking interval is from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. So if you wake up at 6 a.m. and write most of your code from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., you're doing yourself a disservice. You'd be naturally better and more focused and productive at coding if you did the same work at 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. Okay, that's focused thinking. But what about a diffused thinking? Well, with diffused thinking, instead of deliberately focusing on one specific thing, you think about the big picture. It's similar to when you actively use an app on your phone while another app runs in the background. The background app continues to work, but it's not the forefront at the moment. This is how diffuse thinking works. It is not concentrated in any one part of your brain, and instead the work is distributed across multiple areas. Diffuse thinking lends itself very well to creative activities, such as thinking about a chord progression for a musical composition, or thinking about a math problem while walking your dog, mulling over a tricky bug during your shower, or brainstorming a software architecture with your team. While diffuse thinking can happen throughout the day, research has shown that certain intervals during the day are obviously much better than others, especially when it comes to creative work like thinking about the architecture of a new coding project. And it turns out that some level of distraction actually helps creative thinking. A study by Weath and Zach suggested that innovation and creativity are greatest when we are not at our best with respect to our circadian rhythms. A state where you lack focus and are a bit tired boosts your ability to think creatively. 
According to Ethan Sachs, inside problems involve thinking outside the box, and this is when susceptibility to distractions can be of benefit. At off-peak times, we are less focused and may consider a broader range of information. This wider scope gives us access to more alternatives and diverse interpretations, thus fostering innovation and insight. This other study showed that creative insights and imaginative solutions occur when we stop working on a particular problem and let our minds move on to something else that is unrelated. Participants showed market improvements on a task requiring creative thoughts after they had engaged in a different, undemanding task that facilitated mind wandering. So basically, the more their minds wander, the better they fared at being creative. This is the exact opposite to focus thinking. When you write code, you want to be laser focused without any distractions whatsoever. Okay, so I told you about your chronotype and how that impacts your focused and diffuse thinking bonds. And that was probably a lot of new information and a bunch of scientific studies. So how do you put all of this together into practical actions to improve your engineering efficiency in your own daily lives? Let me use my own chronotype as an example and show you how I try to organize my day to get the best output from my focused as well as creative activities. But before that, let me quickly talk to you about today's video sponsor, Springboard. Springboard is an online learning and career platform that provides industry-leading boot camps. Let's look at software engineering, for example, which, as you all know, is a career skill that is always in demand. In Springboard's industry-leading software engineering curriculum, you will learn the necessary theory, tools, and skills required to become a competent software engineer. You will also gain hands-on experience at each stage of development process, from design and coding to testing and pushing out to production. And you'll also be coding in some of the most widely used programming languages and frameworks in the world. Not to mention, they've also partnered with Colt Steel, who is an amazing coding instructor. You will also receive mentorship from industry professionals who will offer you guidance, feedback, and support that is tailored to your unique needs and goals. And on top of that, under their tuition money back program, you will get your money back if you don't find a job in your desired field within six months of course completion. On average, graduates of Springboard Software Engineering Curriculum have had their salaries increased by $27,000. So if you're looking to take control of your career and add a highly sought after skill set to your resume, whether you're just starting out or looking to take your existing skills to the next level, Springboard can help. And if software engineering is not your thing, you can also explore some other curriculums that they have like cybersecurity, machine learning, data science, and UX design. Visit the link in the description below to get a $1,000 discount on any of Springboard's boot camps. Thanks to Springboard for sponsoring this video. Okay, back to my chronotype. So if I don't set alarms, I naturally wake up at around 7 a.m. every day. So based on that, my ideal focus thinking interval is from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. This is when I try to do most of my coding or implementation work. Of course, this is not strictly bounded system. You have meetings on some days and some other days you have to do something else. But if my calendar is empty, I do my best to put my coding work during this time. Same goes for YouTube script. If I need to write my script on an already researched topic, I do this during the same window on the weekends. At around 5 p.m., my focus and energy starts to wane and I start getting a bit distracted. This is when I try to do my creative work, either from 5 to 7 p.m. or between 8 to 10 p.m. This can be thinking about design choices of a project I'm working on or the concept, talking points, and research for an upcoming video. And finally, there is scientific evidence that shows that we have the highest levels of motivation during the first three hours of waking up. So naturally, I try to do the things that I absolutely do do not want to skip during this window. These are things like working out or walking my dog. On non-workout days, this is the window I also get the boring stuff done, like emails, planning, journaling, organization, or smaller randomizing tasks. So to summarize and close the loops, my advice to you is the following. First, figure out your chronotype. I'll put a link to a great free test that you can use to figure that out in the description below. Second, based on that, you identify your focus thinking interval. Then also identify another three hour window after your focus thinking interval when you're a bit tired but not exhausted. This is your creative interval. Try your best to schedule your coding work during your focused interval and your design or problem solving work during your creative interval. And finally, schedule things that require the highest level of motivation right after you wake up. And that's it. Remember that perfection is not the goal here. 
Work environment is very dynamic and it is impossible to schedule your day perfectly. Some days you will need to do focused work when you are really tired and other days you'll have to brainstorm or design first thing in the morning. And that's totally fine. Just be mindful of your intervals and try your best to align them with the work you're doing. And if you do that, in just a few weeks, you should notice improvement in your coding and creative output along with a noticeable uptick in the energy levels you have throughout the day. Check out this other video if you want to learn science pack techniques to improve your memory and recall around highly technical concepts in software engineering. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And also, I want to thank all of you for being part of my journey through this channel, and I wish you all a very happy new year. I hope that 2024 will be an epic year for every single one of you. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.